few years ago, I pulled this motor from my 62 VW bus. This is a 300 horsepower turbo, all right? Subaru TSI motor. It produces about 300 horsepower or more, uh, depending on how much boost you give it. Uh, I pulled it because it was burning oil and I didn't feel like rebuilding it at the time, so I actually have a different motor in my car right now. I actually have a WRX motor, 227 horsepower motor in it right now. But I like this motor better because it's cleaner, the valve covers are nicer, and I just like the way that the turbo and everything is routed and plumbed. It's much simpler and it has a much nicer head. And this is a TSI motor, which means it's, it has a heavier built crank and all the gears and everything are just better than the standard WRX. But anyways, today we're going to figure out why it's burning oil. So we're going to have to look at everything and then decide what we want to do. You ever built a motor? Let's do it. So besides the ring gap being too large, and causing me to burn oil here. I'm also burning oil through the turbo because there's a lot of play here. I can hear this. There's some there's some play here. And so it's leaking through the seal. So I need to have uh, I need to get a rebuild kit for the turbo, but let's deal with the motor. Let's tear this motor down right now. The crankshaft timing gear is also completely worn out. It's actually sharp when it's supposed to be square. So I bought a new one of those. So we're already ahead of schedule that I saw that in time. Okay, it's time to strip it down. Oh, starting with this messed up cam here. Where's my 10 millimeter oil pump? Now Subarus are a little bit different uh, than a top. They're opposite opposed, so you have to split the case in order to get the crankshaft out. But the pistons need to stay inside, so you have to get the uh, the connecting rod pin. <laughs> you have to get the piston pin out by taking this cover off here and here and push the, uh, the piston pins through. So let's take that off. Put a lot of pressure on it so you don't, because once you strip it, it's done. Oh yeah, they all came off. We got that cover off. Now for the tricky part. <laughs> we need to get this piston uh, out, the piston pin out. If we see the, through the hole, you can see the little clip right there. So we can just grab the clip and see, we got the clip right there. That was a lot easier than I thought. Don't lose anything, and then we can push the piston from the other side. <laughs> I didn't use that. <laughs> Just like that. And I'm going to leave all the rings so I can see the position, and we'll measure them all later. But for now, we're going to reuse all this. I'm just going to do rings and bearings. And then put that in this position right here. Lay it all out so you don't mess anything up. <laughs> now these bolts, these block bolts were really on there. I had to use my three quarter inch gun here to get them off. Here we go. Take the crank shaft out. Nice and straight. And there you have it. Now we can take it all apart and measure it. Looks pretty beat up. Beat up. It's 
these two are beat up. It doesn't get as much oil. And see how shot they are? Look at how worn those babies are. They're all pitted. Not much left. Pretty scratched. Big pits in it. Before we get it all cleaned up, I'm going to check the bearing clearance with the, the we got the plastic gauge. So we got the plastic gauge in here, torque it down. There we go 32. 32. Take it apart the easy way. Be careful not to make it turn. So then we can check it. Should be 0 0.008 to 0 0.002. And it looks like it's 0 0.002. So we are perfect on the clearance right here, 0 0.002. I took it outside, pressure washed it. I think I'm going to start uh, cleaning it up, starting with let's hone it. really all it needs. That ought to do it. Okay, let's weigh these. 594.5 right around. Number th hole number three, five nine four point point five six on the verge. Five nine five point almost five point six. Too heavy got to balance this piston. It's too heavy. I don't want to take metal off the piston, so I'm going to take it from the inside of the pin. Because obviously steel weighs heavier than the aluminum, and it's just faster. Diamond bit. Next is to balance the rods. Five nine five, and you can see to shape it. I actually grind it right here. Five nine five. Because if they don't turn, you did something wrong. <laughs> a couple different ways to get the bearing clearances. One is to use plastic gauge, which I used on the connecting rods. But I don't want to have to assemble the block and uh, to get it for the main bearings. So for that, I would rather just measure it. <laughs> so that's what these are for. And then you could just do the math. <laughs> Mine came out to 0 0.0025, which is just fine for me. Put the main bearings in. Okay. 
Now this is why I lay out all the bolts so that I know where they go back. Because <laughs> some of them are different lengths. This way it goes back together so much quicker because I don't have to figure out where the bolts go. I laid them all out according to where they went in sequence. Front, top, sides, back. So these were the tops. They're all the same length, but now that they're all in, start torquing them. I've got, I just mixed my plaster this morning for, uh, for the jewelry plaster. It's going to go into the ovens tonight. So work, play. You know what they say, your shop should be bigger than your house. <laughs> the short block is assembled. Cool. And it still turns. So that's, that's good news. 